has shown himself in glory. All the people desire to see him. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. May the name of the Lord be blessed, both now and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, praise be the name of the Lord. High above all nations is the Lord, above the heavens his glory. Who is like the Lord our God, who has risen on high to his throne, yet stoops from the heights to look down, to look down upon heaven and earth? Wo praise the Lord Jerusalem. Zion, praise your God. He has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed the children within you. He established peace on your borders. He feeds you with finest wheat. He sends out his word to the earth and swiftly runs his command. He shovels down snow white as wool. He scatters hoarfrost like ashes. He hurls down hailstones like crumbs. The waters are frozen at his touch. He sends forth his word and it smells them. At the breath of his mouth the waters flow. He makes known Jacob to Israel his laws and decrees. He has not dealt thus with other nations. He has, he has not taught them his decrees. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Saint Luke, chapter 2, verses from 1 to 14. A decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be enrolled, each to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to be delivered. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. 
and in that region there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night and an angel of the lord appeared to them and the glory of the lord shone around them and they were filled with fear and the angel said to them be not afraid for behold i bring you good news of a great joy which will come to all the people for to you is born this day in the city of david a savior who is christ the lord and this will be a sign for you you will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger and suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising god and saying glory to god in the highest and on the earth peace among men with whom he is pleased the gospel of the lord praise you lord jesus christ dear fathers my dear brothers and sisters when i was parish priest of kanjikicharla the parish in the diocese of vijayawada the christian religious leaders of both catholic and protestant churches used to have semi christmas celebrations in nandigama one year we invited for the celebration a professor of an university living in the area who is also a hindu while making a comparison of jesus's birth with the hindu concept of avatara he referred to bhagavad gita shlokas yada yada hi dharmasya glanir bhavati bharata abhyuttanam adharmasya tadatmanam srujam yaham the translation goes like this o bharata whenever there is decline of righteousness and rise of evil i manifest myself paritranaya sadhu nam vinashaya chadushrutam dharma samsthapanardhaya sambhavami yuge yuge and the translation goes for the protection of righteous for the destruction of wicked and for the establishment of dharma i am born in every age in his opinion if i had understood him correctly there is no difference between a hindu god's avatar and the incarnation of our lord jesus however the mystery of jesus is in direct opposition to the concept of hindu avatar the similarity is only peripheral and many of our hindu brethren argue that the christianity offers nothing new to this world most of the if not all the dogmatic concepts of our religion they say are also found in their religion in the context of growing hindu fundamentalism in india we need to understand what is christmas the birth of our savior jesus to us both dogmatically and practically although here we cannot indulge in an exposition of erroneous understanding of equaling a hindu god's avatar with that of incarnation of our lord jesus christ we need to comprehend the necessity to differentiate between those above mentioned concepts one of the fundamental differences we must note is non repetitive physical birth of jesus in this world the celebration of christmas year after year is to receive today into our lives the grace of salvation made available to the humanity through the birth the suffering and death of our lord jesus once and for all for the humanity 2000 years ago the incarnation the word made flesh has happened only once and yet it is ever present in our lives let us try and understand how the event of incarnation of jesus is presented to us by the evangelists especially st luke and st john st john explains to us 
how the word who is with god from the beginning became flesh and dwelt among us and saint luke undoubtedly follows the same understanding to the question of our mother mary how can this happen angel gabriel answers for god nothing will be impossible an alternative translation of this phrase might clarify the meaning as greek word rema means word or thing the sentence can be rendered as because every word from god will not be impossible or in other words because every word from god is possible such a translation makes sense in the context of the res- response of our mother mary behold the handmaid of the lord let it be to me according to your word in the same way the shepherds after having heard the first announcement of the birth of our savior from an angel and the song of praise of the host of angels in heaven glory to god in the highest say to one another let us go over to bethlehem and see this word or this thing to rema to to that has happened which the lord has made known to us thus saint luke and saint john reiterate that it was the word of god that became flesh this word of god that became flesh is the savior of the world he is the anointed he is the lord he is the son of the most high and he is the king and prophet isaiah calls him emmanuel which means god with us and my dear brothers and sisters this is the reason for our happiness and joy in christmas we are happy because we have a god with us no longer we need to worry grumble feel unsafe abandoned like the people of israel in the desert when they had no water even though they witnessed the glorious parting of the red sea the people of israel put the lord to test saying is the lord among us or not exodus chapter 17 verse 7 but we have no worry because today the angel says for you a child is born he is immanuel so we shout with joy along with saint paul if god is with us and for us who can be against us for love of us saint paul continues god did not spare his only begotten son he gave him up for us all for god so loved the world that he gave his only son to all of us so my dear brothers and sisters let us not allow the inherent law of self preservation in us mislead us to ignore reject and the greatest gift that is jesus to us let our hearts not prefer the power wealth and happiness of this world the pursuit of which throws us into the chaos of divisions selfishness and pride christmas is an assurance of god with us the god who is ready to be with us the god who does not leave us half the way but accompanies us till the end the god who laid his life for us his act of love is not temporary limited to one yuga but eternal let us not waste the grace of becoming his children the grace which he obtained through his incarnation the death on the cross and the grace which he offers us freely let us submit like our mother mary saying lord let it happen to me according to your word and every time we submit ourselves to god's will christmas happens again and it happens to us today let christmas be ever present in our lives wish you a very happy and peaceful christmas and a prosperous new year 2018 may god be with us dear brothers and sisters we are gathered around this crib to celebrate the new coming of christ into the world for our salvation throughout this christmas season we will look on these images 
of sheep and cattle, of shepherds and angels, of Mary and Joseph, and the Holy Child Jesus. This manger scene can tell us so much about God's plan of salvation. How through the incarnation of His Son, His Son, God gathers angels and men, and also His inanimate creatures into the peace and joy of His kingdom, and how the poor in spirit are the first ones to recognize and receive these gifts. We now, we now ask for God's blessing upon this crib and upon all who look on the crib with faith and devotion. God of Mary and Joseph, of shepherds and animals, and bless all who gaze on this manger scene with faith, love and gratitude. Through this Christmas season, may these figures tell the story of how angels, humans, animals found Christ the Redeemer in our place. Hearts and homes with a spirit of hospitality and gentleness, gratitude and joy, and guide our steps in the way of peace. We make our prayer in His holy name who became man for us, and lives and now lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Let us turn our prayer to Christ who emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave. He was tempted in every way that we are, but did not sin. Let us pray, saying, Lord Jesus, save us through your birth. Lord Jesus, save us through your birth. Coming into this world, Lord Jesus, you open the new age, which the prophets foretold. In every age, may the church come again to new birth. Lord Jesus, save us through your birth. You took upon yourself our human weakness. Be the eyes of the blind, the strength of the weak, the friend of the lonely. Lord Jesus, save us through your birth. You were born among the poor. Show them your love. Lord Jesus, save us through your birth. You were born among the poor. Show them your love. Lord Jesus, save us by your birth. Your birth brings eternal life within man's reach. Comfort the dying with the hope of new life in heaven. Lord Jesus, save us by your word. Gather the departed to yourself and make them radiant in your glory. Lord Jesus, save us through your birth. Let us sum up all our praise and petitions in the Lord's prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us pray. O God, who year by year fill us with joy, as we wait in hope for our redemption, grant us, just as we joyfully welcome your only begotten Son as our Redeemer, we may also merit to face him confidently when he comes again as our judge who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. When he came to us as man, the Son of God, scattered the darkness of this world and filled his church with his glory, May the God of infinite goodness scatter the darkness of sin and brighten your hearts with holiness. Amen. God sent his angels to shepherds to hear all the great joy of our Savior's birth. May he fill you with joy and make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. It will join to heaven. May he give you his peace and goodwill and fellowship with all the heavenly hosts. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
it is necessary to cultivate the habit of being grateful for every good thing that comes to us and to give thanks continuously. All good that happens in our lives is because of the goodness and mercy of God. So let us now pause for a while to thank God sincerely. I now specially thank Reverend Father Rector and both the deacons, Martin and Kishore, for leading today's ceremony in a very spiritual manner. Thank you, dear Father and dear deacons. Let us all thank Reverend Father Rector and the staff for setting apart this time to have Christmas celebrations in a meaningful way and to express our grand love and piety for infant Jesus. Thank you, dear fathers. Let us especially thank Reverend Father D. Suresh, who plundered our attention and grabbed our hearts through his beautiful homily. Thank you, dear Father. Let us thank all the deacons for their active participation. Let us also especially thank all the sisters who care for our good health and show lots of concern towards us, especially today for seeing all the food arrangements. Thank you, dear sisters. Oh uh -huh. 